How do you take this and turn it into this? Watch this video and find out. Well, folks, welcome back to the Rock and Sea Homestead. My name is Lance. I want to welcome you to our channel. And if you saw on the opening, it's that time of year to make some aged eggnog. Now, last year we did this, very first time we've ever done it, and it was awesome. And the folks in my family were quite dubious at first because as you kind of go along through the process, it doesn't look really great. But at the very end, come part two of this video, it is fantastic. So let's get started. Hey, and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, click that button, ring that bell so you don't miss the next video coming out because there will be a part two in about three weeks that will explain how to finish up this recipe. But let's get to it now. Since this is an eggnog recipe, we are going to use eggs. And actually, we're going to use 12 eggs per batch. Now, these are farm fresh eggs. They haven't been washed. The bloom's on the eggs straight from the chickens. Now, if you don't have farm fresh eggs, or if you have washed eggs, they're in your refrigerator, that's okay. You can still use them. You can even go out to the store and buy eggs and use those in this recipe. You just have to keep with that ratio of one and a half fluid ounces of alcohol to one egg. And then that will balance out and actually ferment or age the eggs and make sure that any bacteria, all those kind of nasty stuff are, are killed in the eggs as it ages throughout the next three or four weeks. All right, so we talked about the eggs. Now let's talk about the alcohol. So in this recipe, we're gonna use two different types of liquor. One is uh, rum, actually black spice rum, and then one is Kentucky bourbon. Both of these are over 80 proof, and you do need to, to have the alcohol content over 80 proof. Now you do see a third one over here, and it's actually cognac. Now the recipe that we used last year called for cognac. It's a real strong flavor, and we decided to kind of change it up and just go more with the rum and the bourbon kind of spread that out. Those are probably better flavors that we like. But if you just want to stick with the recipe, we'll put all of them down below in the description. But here's a couple options and variations that you can do. The main thing is stay with that 1.5 ounces per egg to make sure everything is safe. But before we use the Kraken, we got to get started cracking. So I got the 12 eggs cracked or in the bowl. I'm gonna kind of give them a whisk. Now last year I used actually a whisk and it took forever. And then I went to my blender and that worked great. This year we have an immersion blender. If you haven't used one of these, it's awesome. It's like a blending stick from heaven. So you just kind of connect it all, stick it in the bowl, turn it on. And at this point, you just have a mixture for scrambled eggs. So we got all of our eggs mixed up, so now we're gonna start putting in the wet liquids. And we need a cup and a half of bourbon. Now again, you can use any kind of bourbon that you want, just needs to make sure that it's over 80 proof. So if you're a Jim Beam fan or a Jack fan, go for it. All right, so that's the bourbon. And then the original recipe calls for a half a cup of rum, or a third of a cup of rum. And we're using a dark spice rum, that's what we like. And then it also calls for a half a cup of cognac I don't want to use that, so I'm just going to add in a half a cup more of rum. And then that's all your liquid parts at this point. Now we need to put in the sugar, and you need a, a cup and a half of sugar. Now, 
if you're not a big sugar eater, I'm sure you could reduce it. I don't think the sugar has anything to do with the, the preservation or the aging of it. I think it's just for sweetness as you go through. Uh, don't count it, I'm not 100% on that, but I, I do not think it, it's actually a preservation portion of it. It's more of a sweetness for the overall dish at the end or drink at the end. All right, now we got all of our ingredients. So we're just gonna blend this up really, really good. So we got everything blended up, mixed together. Now it's kind. Of, now it's time for storage. So last year we stored them in half gallon mason jars. It worked great, but when it came to actually processing it out and actually making the second stage of the eggnog, we just felt like it was maybe too much eggnog all at once. So we're not going to use the half gallon, but you could. What we're going to do is we're actually going to use one quart and the rest pints. So we're gonna make a whole nother batch and use four more um, pint jars, but this is gonna be for a big celebration that we have at you know, Christmas, Thanksgiving, or not, or not Thanksgiving, but we're gonna use this for a big celebration come Christmas. So we're gonna use this and make a big batch of it. The rest are gonna be smaller batches. We've been, uh, I've uh, taken orders for this eggnog. So I'm telling you, if people are asking for it, you know it's good. So we're just gonna do it in here, give them instructions on how to process the second portion themselves. They can put this in their fridge and it should stay quite a bit outside of that four week aging period. So now we just have to get these filled up and we should be good to go. So we are completely finished. We did two batches, and this is the outcome of those. So we got one quart, we got four pints, and we got a half a pint. And at this point, all you do, stick these in a cool, dry spot, and just leave it there, forget about it, don't look at it. And if you do look at it and it starts getting some separation, don't worry about it, it's okay. Trust me. I know the coloration isn't like, oh, it looks awesome. When you put in everything at the end on, on video number two, it's worth it. So at this point, guys, thanks for coming back. Hope you learned how to make some aged eggnog, at least part one of it. In about three weeks, we'll do part two. We can't, we're super excited to show you guys what it looks like when it's completed. I wish we can have you taste it because it is awesome. But again, thanks for coming back, watching our videos. If you haven't already subscribed, click that button, ring that bell, we'd really appreciate it. If you haven't seen us on Facebook or Instagram, those are down in the description below. And from our homestead years, have a great day and we'll catch you on the next video. Bye.